Hey, it's Jay, and over the next few weeks, we're gonna completely redo our master bedroom. We're gonna be tearing up the carpet, putting down tile floors, got a brand new bed, new nightstand, and then we're gonna do a feature wall behind us with a nice grid pattern. Stay tuned, it's gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> this is just a general idea of what we're thinking, so we're just playing around right now. I think we're gonna go six verticals, and then we're gonna do a trim on the top, trim on the bottom, and then we'll have two horizontals that go kind of across the middle. Each rectangle will be the same size, so we're gonna have to do some math calculations. I've drawn out the dimensions of uh, my room in particular, and so we've got 18 feet by 10 feet. A lot of people actually do their horizontals as one piece and then cut up their verticals, but in this case, uh, the room is so long, 18 feet, that I can't fit one horizontal piece across. We're gonna do the verticals, and then we're gonna do the horizontals after in between the verticals. So how do you calculate? Well, the first step is to calculate the length of the room. We've got 18 feet, and a one by four is actually 3.5 inches wide. What we're gonna end up doing is adding up the width of these six boards. So that's gonna be 21 inches wide of just boards. So we're gonna subtract out 21 inches. And what we end up getting is 195 inches. That 195 inches represents all the space on the wall in between all of the boards. 195 divided by five spaces and we get uh, 39 inches. So what that means is that I put my first board up vertical and then I'm gonna measure 39 inches and the edge of this board will be, it'll be 39 inches right in here. Now horizontal real quick and I calculated that these baseboards are basically seven inches tall. That means that there's nine feet, five inches all the way to the ceiling. And so therefore nine feet, five inches is gonna be 113 inches. We're gonna subtract four times 3.5, which is 14 inches. And then that's gonna equal 99 inches. And we're gonna count the spaces. One, two, three vertical spaces. We're gonna divide that by three, 33 inches. So our space this way, vertically, is gonna be 33 inches. All right, and that's how you calculate your grid pattern. The next step is to cut all the pieces, sand them down, and then after we sand them, we're gonna end up painting before we put them on the wall. At the same time, I'm gonna paint this entire wall before we actually put the wood planks on the wall. We're done with our cuts. The next step is sanding. Dana's gonna help me out with the sanding. We're gonna start with 150 grit and end with 220. Okay, while Dana's being awesome and sanding out there, I'm just setting up a paint center in here. I got a brand new paint at Home Depot and basically gonna just go down and paint each board and get one coat on them so that they're not bare going on the wall. All right, Dana and I finished all the boards. It took about two and a half hours to get through each one of these and just sand them all well. I made an executive decision that we're gonna stick with just 150 on the grit. We're not gonna do the 220 because they honestly turned out pretty well with just 150. We just worked on them extra hard and they look good. Next step, I'm gonna use a little microfiber cloth that's damp and I'm just gonna wipe every board down and just get any of the dust off of them and get them prepped for painting. Whew. It's about two hours, 15 minutes to paint all these boards. I think we're gonna call it a night. I'll see you tomorrow. Today is a new day and we are ready to paint this wall. I've spackled and sanded it three times. I moved all the boards we painted yesterday into the room and I'll probably hit them one more time before they go up on the wall. At least the ones that will border because the less I have to tape and worry about painting other areas that I don't wanna paint, the better.
All right, finished the first coat on the wall behind us. I think it turned out pretty well. It's nice that I didn't have to actually cut in at all because the boards are gonna cover the perimeter. As far as these boards go, I can still see the wood grain and I definitely need another coat on these. I'm debating on whether to risk it and just try to go down them with the roller real quick, see how that turns out. That was actually pretty quick and worked really well, so I'm gonna actually pick 10 of the other 20 boards, and there are a few, I mean, these are common boards from Home Depot, so there are some that have flaws in them, and one side might not be perfect, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna try to hide those imperfections by putting them up against the ceiling or against the floor. It's been about 10 hours since we painted this wall and we are ready to attach the boards. And I'm gonna be using uh, two things. I'm gonna be using liquid nails and I'm gonna coat the back of each panel that, and then we're gonna follow it up with the finished nails. Uh, you can use a brad nailer, but I'm gonna use two to two and a half inch nails um, just to staple everything in. This is where the measuring starts to come in. We need to measure 39 inches in between each board. So I just did three marks in a line, 39 inches from the other board. And then I'll just check once again, once I put the board up and I'll just move it around just slightly just to make sure that everything is level. We made some really good progress today, uh, but I'm gonna call it a night. It's about nine o'clock and kids are trying to sleep. We did make one little mistake and we ended up with just a little bit extra in the wall. So it was like 18 feet, one inch. So we just added it to the center. The only issue is, is that because we have a slightly larger middle gap now, which won't be noticeable when everything's done, but my horizontal boards that I cut are just slightly too short. Tomorrow we're gonna have to tackle that. I'm gonna have to cut some custom boards, four custom boards to fit in the middle, but everything else should be pretty good. All right, good night, I'll see you tomorrow. The wall is not flat. All right, it's time to start off the grid pattern. So what I did is I took a piece of scrap wood and I cut a 33 inch board that I can just stick right here. And that'll give me the perfect spacing. And then what I'm gonna do is take my board and I can just rest it right on the 33 inches. And then take my level and then just adjust it however I need to. All right, and then that'll be just an easy way to attach these horizontal boards. And I'll have a perfect 33 inches each time. Boards are cut and sanded, now we just need some paint. We've gotten to the point here where we're gonna to start to do some finish work. So the next step, you just wanna fill all these gaps with a very, very thin line of caulk. Everything does move around and um, this will not crack. So it'll, it'll make it a really nice finish. It is kind of a pain and we've got 15 panels here. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. What I wanted to do was first 
uh, try a spot that's gonna kind of be covered over just so I can practice a little bit. It's been a little while since I've done this. I just clipped off just a little tiny bit right here. So that should just allow just a little bit to come out so I get a very thin bead. I'm gonna point the, the sharp point of the tip up. I'm trying to do a nice even line. All right, and then I'm just gonna take my finger. Finished up all 15 rectangles. It took me about an hour. It actually went a little faster than I thought it would, which was good. We're getting super close to the end. Tomorrow we have to spackle and sand all of the nail holes and all the where all the boards meet each other. And then I think we're ready to paint. So we're getting close. All right, today is all about spackling and filling in all the remaining gaps. So we're using DAP Dry Dex. It goes on pink and it dries white so it's a really nice product as far as putting this stuff on we want to fill all the gaps in between so i'm just gonna basically take a little bit and then as far as like little nail holes go whoop, little nail holes are just gonna go like that and then you can go across it kind of like 45 degrees i had forgotten to turn my air compressor back on and it was running low on air, so it didn't pump a few of these nails in as far as they should have gone in. So I'm just coming up to them real quick. Hammer and screwdriver. Just setting them in a little bit. We've got sanding today, and I am using a sanding sponge that's 150 grit, so let's do it. Just sanded another round on the spots that I had touched up and I think it's time to clean up. I'm just taking a damp microfiber cloth and I'm just gonna wipe everything down. We're finally at the final stage, so we're gonna start in with the roller and the brush, and we'll be trading back and forth. I'm gonna to try to roll everything I possibly can, and then I'm gonna fill in all the fine details with the brush. Don't forget to like this video and please consider subscribing. Woo!